you'll chop one slice, you cut and dice, you eat, you a whole. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, if you have any movie or TV show you want me to cover, leave it in the comments below. And if you enjoy the videos, don't forget to subscribe, I really appreciate it. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the vampires from The Witcher, more specifically the Bruxa, which is featured in the new season of The Witcher that came out on Netflix. I've been covering a lot of Netflix originals, but I swear it's just a coincidence, and my next video is going to break the streak. In the episode, we meet a man named Nevelin, who after some poor decisions was cursed by a priestess to look like a beast and be alone. One day while in the woods, he found the Bruxa, injured and starving. Her name was Verena, and he brought her back to his home, and when she was healed, she chose to stay with him and they fell in love. To help ease her cravings, he let the Bruxa feed on him, but it wasn't enough for her, and she couldn't control herself. She started to feed on the people of the neighboring village until there was no one left. Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher, visits the village for supplies and finds it empty. He then visits his friend Nevelin, who lives close by to ask where everyone went, but is surprised when he bursts through the door in his new form. He tells Geralt that all the people fled the village because of the wars going on, but Geralt doesn't seem to believe him. Nevelin performs some impressive magic and offers them to stay the night since they've been traveling in the cold. While Geralt and Ciri stay the night, Nevelin tries to keep the creature secret from Geralt because he knows if a witcher finds a monster, he doesn't have a choice but to slay it. Eventually, after putting some clues together, Geralt figures out there's a Bruxa in the house. They debate on whether or not she was a monster, and Nevelin says she wasn't, because she was the only one who could look past his appearance and still love him. But I think the entire village of corpses might have another opinion. In The Witcher, a vampire is a broad term used to describe a creature that survives by feeding on blood. Vampires descend from three ancient tribes that arrived on the continent during the conjunction of the spheres. This event is only vaguely understood by those who inhabit the world of The Witcher, but the common belief is that it was when all worlds, or spheres, collided, and with them, monsters and other beings such as vampires slipped into our world. Lower and higher vampires are born vampires. They are their own separate species not intermingled with humans. Higher vampires have an ancient culture. Most of the details are hidden from mortal eyes, but we do know they like to celebrate full moons like an important holiday and tend to raid villages and get drunk on blood. Lower vampires are more animalistic creatures that have low intelligence. They have no human form and must consume blood to live. Higher vampires, on the other hand, do not actually need to consume blood. Instead, it's similar to something like alcohol for them, and they consume it for enjoyment. It can also temporarily increase their strength. Some higher vampires have sworn off blood and choose to live alongside humans. But true higher vampires are extremely rare, and most people will go their whole life without ever meeting one. Vampire lore in The Witcher can be a little confusing. Higher vampires don't need blood, and technically a Bruxa is a higher vampire, but it's more of a subspecies, so they still need blood to survive, unlike a true higher vampire. In The Witcher, vampire weaknesses such as holy water, crucifixes, garlic, wooden stakes, etc. are nothing more than folklore and do not work. Something unique to The Witcher is there's something called St. Gregory's Oil, which is referred to as vampire oil by witchers. It's a kind of oil you use to coat your blade and it causes more harm to all vampires. Vampires have evolved and are no longer weak to sunlight. For some species it causes some discomfort, but nothing that would harm them. They do not cast reflections in mirrors, and they do not have a shadow. This is often the only way to tell a true higher vampire, as aside from their lack of shadow and reflection, they are identical to humans. A higher vampire who traveled with Geralt for a short time said he was once decapitated, staked through the heart, sprinkled with holy water, and buried, and that still did not prevent him from regenerating. Sometimes it can take decades or centuries for a vampire to fully recover if their body was considerably destroyed. The only way a true higher vampire can die is if they are killed by another higher vampire. Even a witcher or powerful magic cannot permanently kill them. But once again, a Bruxa is a subspecies of higher vampire, and silver weapons do work on Bruxa, where they wouldn't work on a true higher vampire. So most likely, Bruxa can still be permanently killed, and the show definitely seems to go with that idea. Higher vampires and the Bruxa have the ability to avoid detection of the Witcher's medallion, and are usually very intelligent and can possess unique supernatural abilities like bewitching with their eyes and invisibility, which makes them an extremely powerful foe. The Bruxa was able to speak using telepathy and made Ciri fall asleep. They also have a unique ability to perform a scream that can send someone flying backwards. The scream can also temporarily blind their prey. 
In the show, Debruxa was also able to manipulate her body and bones. She made her arms bend behind her back in an unnatural way and made her neck spin all the way around so she could try to kill Navellan. The Bruxa usually appears as a woman, but when enraged, her appearance can change showing two rows of sharp teeth and pale eyes. While in human form, they are also able to scale walls and ceilings like Spider-Man. The Bruxa's alternate form is a large black bat creature that is very strong with claws and rows of sharp teeth, similar to when it's in human form. It can fly at high speeds and uses a clicking type noise to help navigate. The Bruxa like to sing in their native vampire language, especially after they drank blood, and their songs are described as silent, shrill, and sickening. Using these, Bruxa can manipulate humans by altering their dreams and turning them into horrible nightmares. Vampire language is a mother tongue of intelligent vampires, including higher vampires and Bruxa, but they rarely expose it and prefer to communicate with other races through telepathy or common speech. The Witcher can use a form of magic called signs, which are very useful against vampires. There are two protective signs in the novels. One works against magical attacks, like the Bruxa's scream, and the other is meant for physical attacks, but the show seems to combine the two into one protection sign. Although the protection sign is strong, it is said that a powerful Bruxa's scream will go right through it. I wanted to read this journal entry from The Witcher 2 that describes some more about the Bruxa. The Bruxa is a higher vampire that is a post-conjunction creature, an intruder in our world. She appears as a beautiful woman, but when she is hungry or attacking, she is terrifying. As a vampire, the Bruxa drinks blood. She often finds a victim to become her lover and a constant supply of sustenance at the time. The Bruxa finds the smell of garlic to be socially inconvenient at most, and she considers holy symbols to be interesting examples of handicraft. She endures the light of the sun well, but she prefers the darkness of the night. As you see, most stereotypical preconceptions about vampires are plain wrong. So what works? The blade of a silver sword, as usual. Apart from silver, she can be wounded with fire and a stake. A Bruxa is a womanoid, just like an Alp, which is another kind of vampire. Less powerful Bruxa often hunt in packs, making it easier to corner prey. If threatened, they attack with their talons and rip their victim apart, pausing only to savor the blood of their dying foe. The greatest threat to a Witcher is the Bruxa's voice. The creature can screech with such force that a shockwave will knock even a large man down, making him easy prey for the vampire. The Bruxa have masterful control over their blood circulation, rendering poisons and oils that increase bleeding ineffective against them. They are good at defending themselves against Witcher's tricks, but they are vulnerable to fire and can be knocked down and finished off as they try to get up. Well, that's a little about the higher vampires and Bruxa from The Witcher. I'm still working on some other videos, but I really wanted to do some research on the vampires from The Witcher after watching the new season. They really caught my interest, so I wanted to do a video about it, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to watch this episode featuring the vampire, it's season two, episode one, and it's a little over an hour long. If you don't care for The Witcher or don't know anything about it, but you like vampires, I think you would still really enjoy this episode on its own. It's possibly my favorite episode of the entire Witcher series on Netflix. Right now I'm working on a video about the television series The Strain, but if you have any other suggestions for movies or a TV show I should cover, please leave it in the comments below. Because of you guys, I've found so many amazing shows and movies that I didn't even know existed, so thanks. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.